Today we're going to talk about why you should consider working in the field of technology. So why should you consider a career in technology? There's a lot of different reasons and today we're going to focus on four, starting with the fact that you can work virtually anywhere you want in the world. Take a look at these cities. You'll notice some cities on here that may not be that much of a surprise to you, for example, the Silicon Valley Bay Area. However, you may see other cities that might surprise you as being up-and-coming tech hubs uh, in the nation. Take a moment to see, are these cities that you would like to consider living in one day after you finish school? Let's broaden our scope to look at the entire world. Again, notice on here, there may be places that you're not expecting to see in terms of top upcoming tech hubs. Um, but the truth is that a lot of countries and a lot of cities are actually competing to be seen as technological forces to be reckoned with and are competing to have your citizenship in those places. This is not a finite list. There's jobs all over the world that are in technology, virtually any city that may be something that you can consider. The other thing that you may not already know is that if you have excellent organizational skills, you're able to manage your time efficiently, you're able to get your work done independently, there are possibilities that you can work remotely from home so long as you have a Wi-Fi connection. And of course, there's always freelance opportunities in different types of jobs. So really, the sky is the limit in terms of where you might be able to work if you should pursue a career in technology. Additionally, you can work in any industry you want. And this might seem a little bit paradoxical because on one hand we're saying you should work in technology, right? So why is technology not the industry I'm working in? Take a look at these photos. Even though they all represent a variety of jobs and industries, notice that they all use technology in common. They all need technology to function. And it may not be visible in this photo, but you can think in the scope of what that job might be and how they're using technology to operate and run. So for example, look at the musician on the right. She's playing guitar and she's writing down song lyrics, but she's also running an application in the program that's helping her edit and mix and produce her music. Now, maybe music is a passion of yours, but maybe it's not something that you would like to pursue professionally as a musician. For example, also the bottom right, there's a couple of sports announcers. Sports might be a very important part of your life. It might be a passion of yours, but not something you see yourself working in directly. However, if you work in behind the scenes in the technology that supports these industries and makes, for example, sustainable farming possible or education possible or fitness possible, then you can keep these passions and these, these dreams of yours within your career, but maybe in a less direct way. It's very interesting to think about the different types of opportunities because all you would really be doing is just creating these applications that help these frontline folks do their jobs. Working. The other thing that we mean by work in any industry is that as technology grows, the expectation for companies, regardless of their foundation or what industry they may have considered to be in uh, typically in the past, the expectation is for them to have a technological presence and to keep up, whether that's via mobile apps, whether that's emerging and groundbreaking technology, um, whether it's innovation that we haven't really even thought of yet and didn't think was possible. Let's look at a couple of examples with KFC and Best Western. When you, ask, when you think about these types of companies, you might say, well, KFC is a you know, chicken company or a fast food company. Um, they're, they're in the restaurant industry. And similar with Best Western, you might say, well, that's a hotel chain. They're in the hospitality industry. I think most people probably wouldn't say that these are in the quote-unquote technological uh, field or the tech industry. But I wonder if that's really so true anymore. And I wonder if really the reality is that any industry has to have a technological side to it. Let's look at the example of Best Western. So if you go on YouTube and you look up uh, you look up Best Western Virtual Reality Experience, notice that within the YouTube player, you're actually able to drag your mouse around on the screen and manipulate the viewpoint that the YouTube uh, player is displaying, which is pretty groundbreaking not only for YouTube, but Best Western is not necessarily a hotel chain that's ever been thought to be the most technologically advanced. I think most people would consider them to be 
perhaps a budget hotel or kind of middle of the road, but look at what they're doing now. They're even showing the layout, this VR experience for future upcoming plans as they're doing right here. And I, as a hotel guest or as someone who's interested in staying there, I can get a really, really in-depth, uh, detailed look at what the lobby looks like or the pool looks like or maybe this up-and-coming bar or lounge area that they haven't quite built yet. So it's not really accurate to say that Best Western is just a hotel chain or just in the hospitality industry when they're obviously spending quite a bit of money to produce this type of technology. Let's go forward and look at KFC as well. So if you go to YouTube, we won't display the videos here in this in this PowerPoint, but you're free to look up these and other examples as well. It's called K-Pro and it's KFC's line of high-tech chain uh, stores that are located in China. So the first one on the left is called the paying with your face or pay with a smile feature. And what it is is facial recognition technology that allows you to simply smile and the system will scan your face and associate your unique facial pattern and smile patterns uh, with some kind of authenticated credit card or payment method, all without ever explicitly identifying yourself, and it allows you to order and pay at a kiosk in under a minute. So again, is that something that only a fast food company would do, or is this something that's this interesting amalgam of both fast food, yes, but also high technology, lots of investment, research and development being poured into? On the right, we have another similar uh, facial recognition feature, but what it does instead is it actually scans you and it, based off of your appearance and based off of certain demographic information it can pick up about you, it will suggest meal plans because two different, totally different types of people that are different sizes or different statures may want to order different types of things, and it's using things like uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and we'll talk more about what those types of technologies mean and how they're important a little bit later on um, but again the point just being that you know even companies like KFC are pouring you know millions of dollars into creating this type of technology um, the K Pro brand is 100% a digital experience uh, you know investment um, and it's, it's quite interesting to see, and so I encourage you to check out YouTube um, and, just, and just YouTube different videos for KFC's K-Pro capabilities. Let's go ahead and move on to talk about another reason why you should consider a field or a career in the technology field, and that is feeling at ease with job security and stability. I could ask you very cheesy questions like, when was the last time you went 24 hours without using technology, or is technology here to stay? when we all know that, of course, yes, it is here to stay. So instead of having you fake ponder these types of questions, I'll just show you some interesting numbers. Look at the last 50 years of job growth in tech fields, right? Or even if we just start around 1950 and go forward. That's obviously a very steep curve up in the types of jobs, the types of um, innovations that have been created in a very um, technological um, space, especially digital technology, because not all technology is digital, although that is what we tend to associate it with nowadays, especially considering the proliferation of personal computers, um, smartphones, wearable technology. And if you just take a brief scan at the list on the right, these are um, some technologies that, again, are starting to become a little bit more stabilized. Maybe we have done a little bit more research. So for example, obviously mobile technology has been around for quite some time. Even the Internet of Things, chatbots and NLP or natural, natural language processing. These are concepts that have been around for a number of years, but they are still quite new and they're not necessarily um, taking place in every home yet. Although one day you know, the prediction could be made that those things will exist in every single home. Um, so if you look here, I mean, if you expand out to the year 2050, who knows what's going to be on this list on the right in even the next five years. Um, you can find out more information if you go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics website. Um, and if you want to see some more interesting graphics and more interesting data about job growth. And on a similar note, um, same website from the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, gov. You'll notice that from 2016 to 2026, there is a higher, uh, not only job growth, 
but also average salary in the technological fields. Now, again, because some of these fields, like for example, what we'll talk about is product and development, business and strategy, uh, user experience, we'll get into those later in the semester, but some of these things are still quite new as their own discipline and their own type of job or field that they don't really have their own designation in sites such as the Bureau of Labor Statistics. But if you look up computer and IT occupations, those are very relevant and sort of related um, or at least adjacent types of fields. So that might be a way for you to find out more information about some of these jobs that maybe aren't quite um, uh, maybe well known enough to have their own types of articles written about them yet. Um, and we'll go ahead and talk about the number one reason why you should consider a career in technology, which is simply that you're going to be making a real difference in people's lives. Let's stop to think for a second about what happens when technology goes wrong or when design isn't right, right? And the reason that I mentioned design specifically is because Although lots of different types of jobs go into the making of technology, and, and specifically when I say technology, more with a focus on like software and applications that a user might interact with, um, design and also development, because that has to do with how it was implemented and how it was actually coded, those are the things that users tend to um, associate the most with a certain product. And that's what can affect them the most because it is such an explicit relationship between the user and the interface or the software. So the best case scenario is that you'll have some amusing anecdotes when quote unquote technology fails, right? So if I score 19 out of 19 questions, you would think I get out 100, right? But in this scenario, because something didn't happen right on the back end, I only get a 99.99. That's kind of an amusing anecdote. Not a big deal. If you ask Siri, hey, what's 68 in German? And she tells you 68 numerically. Again, maybe it's not the biggest deal in the world. It might be a little annoying if you really needed to know right then and there, but maybe just more amusing than anything. Again, saying that 21 is a user that already exists or that you have minus two notifications. These are things that maybe are just a little bit silly. Let's look at a couple other examples. So if I need to go to the hospital and Google tells me to go to a hospital that's 34 hours away, this may be a little bit more of a dire scenario, or maybe hopefully the person that needed to go here was not in an emergency and they were able to redo their search in a different app or search it in a different way. Um, if I look up, uh, if I'm trying to go to, you know, level or floor 112, I would have to scan this list pretty hard to know that it's on level five, right? So these are ways that design and technology and the way things are implemented have, it, you know, maybe not a huge impact on the user, but maybe it's a little bit like kind of like a, a paper cut, right? As an analogy, it's annoying, but I'll live. However, there are some more real life implications when design isn't done well and wasn't created for the users that need to understand them. So on the left, we have a series of parking signs. And especially if you've tried to drive around campus and find parking, you'll know that this is kind of confusing and it can be, um, a little bit uncertain to know if I'm going to be towed or if I'm able to park in the right way. And if you look at the, the list of signs on the left, that's not really that hard of a design problem. All you really need to tell people is, you know, when, yes, you can or cannot park and what are the hours that those each apply to. But, you know, obviously these signs are stacked on top of each other. There's a lot of conflicting, you know, contrasts and lots of big capital letters. So it's clearly a little bit hard to scan users can get through it, but they'll have to sit there for a minute. And so obviously that's annoying. On the right, this is, you know, what you need to be able to fill out to in order to file your taxes correctly. A little bit bigger of an implication here, because obviously if you don't fill this out right, which many people may make a mistake if they try to fill this out on their own and, and not use some kind of assistance like an accountant or a software, because it doesn't look that easy to use, especially for a first time or even a first several times user. Um, but what's going to end up happening is someone could end up owing a lot of money simply because they didn't understand how to fill out this form because of the way it was designed. Now, both of these things are interesting because they're not technology in the digital sense. 
But obviously, the process of creating these things is still the same, right? Where you've got someone who is responsible for outputting them. You've got a team of people that went together to hopefully research and then design them and then create them and implement them. So there is a similar process. It's just the end deliverable of it is not a digital interface. Um, but let's look at another example of something that's a little bit more serious of when design and technology goes wrong. So if you think back to January 2018, you may remember the false missile alert that was sent out to all residents living on Hawaii, um, that there was an emergency alert, a ballistic missile threat was inbound, and that it was not a drill, specifically saying it was not a drill. Let's look at a thread that uh, was posted on Reddit sometime after this about what, how people felt when they received this text message. I regret not calling my parents. I was in total denial mode and I only called my fiance to ask if he got the alert. He was working at Honolulu um, and he didn't think he'd ever see me again. Now, at, at the time, this may have been a number of months after and hopefully they've been able to heal from that emotional trauma. But imagine having to go through that and it could be with a potentially a, a partner of yours, it could be with your friend, it could be with your family, your parents, your pets. Imagine thinking that you would never see them again, all because of a technological error that did not ever need to take place. Here's a little bit longer of an example. You can feel free to pause the video if you'd like to read through it. And again, uh, someone changing their two-month-old son. Um, someone who broke their sobriety after four years because they thought literally that the world was ending and that there was no need to, to continue their sobriety after that point. And now they have to live, now that the world did not end, they have to live with that choice that they made um, and try to pick up the pieces. So let me ask, is this something that needed to happen? Well, let's look at why it did happen. Quick, pick the test warning. I imagine that it's a little hard to tell which one is the right test warning and which one's the right drill or which one I'm supposed to be clicking, even if I've had training, simply because this list is not made for human eyes to be able to scan. There's no hierarchy. Everything blends in. There's a lot of all caps, which research shows is very hard to scan. Um, there's a lot of cryptic abbreviated lettering. So I'll tell you the answer. What was supposed to be clicked was drill, PACOM, CDW, state only. Two entries above that is the same label, but not preceded by the word drill, which whose fault is it that that mistake was made? Someone might argue that it's the fault of the person who clicked this link, but I would argue that it's not their fault. It's the fault of the whoever designed this and let this be seen by people who need to make such an important decision and such an important action. We all have jobs. We all have school. We all know that we're not, per people aren't perfect. No one's perfect. Everyone has bad days. Um, everyone has fights with their family or significant other, or people get stressed. They have too many tests going on at the same time. It's finals week. I didn't get a lot of sleep. I, maybe I'm sick. Maybe there's something going on in my family or personal life. All these things affect us. And technology has to be made with the understanding that it is going to be used by people who are not perfect, who will not have perfect days. Um, and this list does not accommodate or account for the fact that people need a little bit of help. We are not machines and we will make mistakes if you make it easy for us to. Imagine trying to turn the radio down and you end up going backwards on the highway. So hopefully this has never actually happened. But again, this car, this car radio sort of navigation dashboard goes against the mental model that typically when you reach out your right hand and you turn a knob a lot of like most of the time you're going to be affecting the radio of some sort like the volume or the station not the gear shift and this car is going against that mental model that is built up off of past experiences that I already have let's take another example if I were to ask you how to whisper to someone how would you do it and you might say, well, you, you know, you lower your voice and you try not to actually make any sound. You just use like air to try to make the words, right? And you just try to be very quiet. We all know how to whisper and it's very easy for us to do. On Twitter, when it was first out, the DM was, it is still the equivalent of kind of like a whisper to someone. It's a private message. Whispering online should be just as easy as it is to do in person. But obviously here, 
Tori Aikman didn't know that you have to have a space in a certain place for the DM at so and so to work. And clearly, this is a little bit of an embarrassing moment because he meant he intended this message only to be for a single person, and now the whole world can see it. And since then, Twitter has gotten better. But when it was first released, this was essentially like. Twitter was saying, hey, we'll give you the capability to whisper to someone, but we're going to make it hard to figure out how to do, and it's not going to be based off of your mental models that you already have. All right, well, hopefully at this point you're saying, I'm sold. Now what? Well, we're going to talk about a lot of things coming up next. Um, the agile development process, for one, as well as what design thinking is, which is what we'll talk about next. Later on in the course, over the span of several weeks, we'll talk about various job roles and responsibilities that are involved. Um, as well as modern technological trends and considerations that you should take if you are considering getting into the field of shaping not only current technology but future technology and probably lots of other stuff along the way. So thank you for watching this first installment of um, the TECM 1500 course. Please contact your instructor if you have any questions. Thank you.